Welcome to Engineer Campus. In the last video, we went on discovery of your idea for a product, and you found out what the problem is you want to solve and which way towards the solution you want to take. You applied critical thinking and tried to find flaws. At the end, you decided that your idea can work and that putting more work into it would be worth it. Now it's time for you to put your idea to the test with the outside world, by comparison with the already available solutions. How new is the solution? Or are others already on the same path? Did others already come up with the same idea? Or is everyone solving the problem in another way? How did they approach the solution? What makes existing solutions different to yours? And how can you differentiate from them? Here it is important, not being the first on the market doesn't have to be a flaw. You can know that customers exist and might buy your product. You can find out which problems other companies have. And what can you do better than them? Most of the time, you just have to produce the same thing, but make it a little bit better. No need to come up with the most futuristic or new thing. This is actually a very hard way, because people mostly want what they know works. So let's go through some areas where information can be found. Patterns. For innovative products, it is always a good idea to look for already existing patterns. It may be that your idea is already protected by somebody else, and this could lead to trouble later. So you can go to the United States Patent and Trademark Office, for example. Uh, you can Google patents, and you go, can go to the departes net of the German Patent Office. Looking through dozens of patents can be very boring from time to time. But as long as patents exist, this is necessary to make sure that your product can go to the market. You will have the sort of Damocles dangling above your head if you are not unsure if you haven't copied someone. Obliviousness doesn't protect you from getting sued. The importance can be a case-by-case -case basis. If you want to produce by yourself and sell over the darknet, you might just disregard patents. Also, some countries may be indifferent to your market is local. If your product happens to be sold in North America or Europe, you can easily get into trouble. But all this shouldn't keep you from constructing awesome stuff. Companies. There may be small or big companies that are already working in this field. This shouldn't discourage you. Even if they have a head start, they are far into the product and already heavily invested. That makes it hard for them to pivot and change their strategy, which is very easy for you, especially in the beginning. The change has to be approved in the internal bureaucracy as well, which makes for them, them even slower to react. This is definitely a strength for you. Don't just look at the websites. When you find an interesting company, you can also contact them. A grand chance is also to visit industrial fairs. I've been to some in Germany, and the people there are always happy to tell you of their companies and their products. Just a reminder, you are not there to steal their ideas. That is just cheap, and there are many measures to prevent this. You are there to learn from them and find out how you can help them. And of course, have fun. Looking at different products. No matter what you are going to build, there are most certainly products similar to it already on the market. Look at a lot of them and learn from those solutions. How is the product structured? How is the problem solved? Which technical functions are combined? How much does it cost? What are the customers? And what is the product margin? Like saying the amount of products produced. There's no shame in taking the best ideas from other products and combining it to something new. As long as you be aware of patents, of course. Other than the visits to the industrial fair, as talked about above, you can go to stores and have a look at the products. Get a marketer and tell you about it. If you have questions, you can call the company later and try to get answers. Maybe shoot them an email first so that they are prepared. Design. Some products might be very futuristic and excite designers to produce studies and drawing. Take, for example, artwork about futuristic settings. They often involve technological devices. You can try to find a device which fits to your idea. It is very interesting how the designer think, thinks about the place of the device in the world. Who will use it and in what context? If your product might be fine in such a setting, you should do some image searches. Not only on Google, but also, for example, on DeviantArt, Pinterest, and other places where lots of creative people. If you're really lucky and you find it in a movie or video. 
if a program might be found in such a setting, you should do some image searches, not only in Google, but also in DeviantArt, Pinterest, and other places with lots of creative people. If you are lucky, then you find it even in a video or a movie. So think about, for example, vacuum robots, futuristic beds and furniture, uh, screens from televisions or computers, something like that. Inventors. There are many inventors with their own YouTube channels and blogs. It may be possible to find similar devices there. This might give you information about the problems the inventors discovered with it, either during construction, assembly, or use. A search on YouTube or Vimeo might give you some suitable results. If you want to see handy people, I go around uh, checking out, for example, Colin Firth, Deep Space Industries, Defense Distributed, Planetary Resources, Primitive Technology, Robot Dreams, SpaceX, The Thought Emporium, Cody's Lab, or similar video channels. See if you find someone that could help you and try to contact them for more information. Goal of the research phase. Doing all this should put your early product idea through a trial of fire. At the end, it should be clear to see if it's worth to continue, if a market and demand exists, if it is technically possible to produce and use your product. There may even be contact to a company interested in your product or the development by you now. It is important to notice that the risk of failing stop being low now, because with the next steps, the investment in the development will increase a lot. Now comes a lot of labor and work, and it sure should be worth it. Hope to see you in the next steps. Thank you very much.